everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to play the Bardinerie from the orchestral suite in B minor by Bach because it's a really fun piece. Now this piece is originally for flute and a string ensemble with continuo. Um, adapting flute music for the recorder happens all the time but it brings up a whole load of interesting questions which we're going to get into in the video. So for a little bit of context, this orchestral suite has a bunch of different movements, a long overture, and that's kind of like the concert part, and then a lot of small dance movements, and the badinerie, I'm sorry about my pronunciation, is the finale of this whole suite, so it's really like, ah. A big question when arranging flute music for the recorder is what key to play it in. I have chosen two versions where the sheet music is available for free on IMSLP. This is so that you can get started right away. They are in A minor for soprano and B minor for alto recorder. Links in the description. This piece is actually most often transposed down a tone into A minor uh, and then played on a soprano. The advantage of A minor is that the fingerings form much more naturally under the fingers. The disadvantage is that it's going to go very high, as we heard with the The original key is actually B minor. This is something that falls really nicely for a flute, but for a recorder is not so nice. Check out this part here, watch my fingers. We have A sharps, we have E sharps, that's a lot of accidentals and a lot of cross fingerings. Let's tackle it first in A minor on the soprano. Those high notes, we have a lot of to hit. A couple of principles about high note playing. The first is your thumb hole. Make sure your thumbnail isn't too long and in general the higher you play the smaller the opening should be. Let's try that. We're going to play a high B and I want you to gradually open and close the thumb hole. Listen what happens. Sorry about your ears. The opening is can I show this? <laughs> the opening is mini school. The other thing is your airstream. For this, you need a very cold, fast airstream, really supporting the sound. So between this tiny thumb hole opening and a supported airstream, your note will have a much better chance of speaking. A way to practice this is the pick up, put down method. I do it like this. You're training yourself to find those positions quickly and yeah. When you have a difficult passage, I think it's really good to practice all around that as well. Make it even more difficult so that when you come to play the real thing, it feels easy. Let's try that with the... We're gonna extend that scale of the notes that poke out as high and low as we can. this I don't expect you to do it in one go don't be afraid to stop in between think about it really play the note when you're ready we have a lot of 16th notes in this piece I like to practice them beat by beat but always making the link to the next group of four um, for example I always give myself time to reset in between. I don't play it again until I'm 100% ready. The articulation can really help you bring out the character of the piece. Now this is personal, but I like to do a strong and then a subtle Do 
The other important thing to consider when you're doing a transposition or an arrangement is to be very critical of the sheet music that you're reading from. If you've downloaded the A minor music, you'll see that this is a violin arrangement made by Sam Franco. And looking at it, it's not very authentic. What does this mean? It means that the editor has made a lot of decisions about how the music should be played and has written them down, but they're not original, it's not what Bach said. We're mainly talking about dynamics and articulation here. In original Baroque music, there's not a great deal of that written down, but here, uh -huh, if we look at bar 7 to 11, he has actually added 15 different signs. The only original ones are the trills and some staccato. If we look at this part in the second section, he's transposed it down an octave, which obviously doesn't fit on the recorder. I would just transpose it back up again. And the ending here, he's invented some kind of stringy cadenza. When the original actually goes, So if your Baroque music is covered in markings, it pays to be a little bit suspicious. You can often find the original or a good edition on imslp.org. Go and compare them, take out anything that's not original, and then make your own interpretation. Let's go back to B minor. We're gonna play this on the alto recorder. It fits really nicely in terms of range. And then I'm including you alto players and you soprano players. As you can hear, there are a lot of crossed fingerings. How to tackle all of these sharps and accidentals. The thing is with accidentals, a lot of them are psychological. We look at the page, there's all these extra markings and our brain goes My way of dealing with this is to take it in really small sections and to actually memorize them. Now this doesn't have to sound scary, you can do it beat by beat, but what we're doing is relying on our muscle memory rather than visuals. G sharp, F sharp, let's have a look at bar 11. G sharp, F sharp, E sharp. I'm gonna repeat that first beat, but gradually move away from the music. By training my thumb to go there, I'm kind of getting rid of the stress of that E sharp. However, because of the nature of our instrument, often the sharp fingerings are more awkward than the open fingerings. I have gone in detail into how to practice difficult finger changes like this in other videos, links down below. But right now I'm gonna say, the metronome is your friend. We're gonna use the metronome to keep ourselves slow. Often it's used to push your speed up and up, but here it's so important that you take the time and stay slow. Especially with an exciting piece like this where I always want to like How to pick your tempo on the metronome. Don't use the opening phrase. That is often something you can actually play quite well, because it's always the first thing that you play. We're gonna look in the music for the most difficult phrase, and take that tempo where you can play it comfortably. I think it's probably from bar 12. Feels good. Now we've got this nice slow tempo, you can really relax into practicing those awkward parts like bar three. going to look at are the 30 second notes towards the end. Often when we see runs of fast notes like this, we panic, we play them as soon as we can, the beat gets all pulled out of shape and ugh. These are actually slower than you think and the trick is knowing where they fall on the beat. But actually the third to last bar is really relaxed. Dum, ba -da -da -dum, ba -ba -bum. Here I would break it up into smaller chunks and keep your fingers really relaxed. <laughs> Don't forget to join it all back up again so you have nice long phrases and it doesn't sound fragmented. <laughs> so those were a 
bunch of tips and ideas for approaching this really cool piece, Baudinari by Bach. Otherwise, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here in the corner. Over here is the Team Recorder web shop where you can order my debut album or Team Recorder merchandise. In the description is our Patreon where you can choose to support the channel. And up here is a link to the most fun video, how to practice a difficult passage. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!